Hi, it's Jill at Inspired to Sew here to talk to you about the importance of perfectly stitched embroidered names on things. We like to put our names on a lot of things for personalization. I'm going to talk to you today about a project that was inspired by a dress that my aunt had given me. It was a dress that she wore for her son's baptism. And I made the decision when I saw it that it would be terrific Christmas stockings. So I took all the pieces apart. Then I took a little bit of time and ironed out darts. She had darts in there and a lot of other good fitting and then made it ready to make the stockings. Um, I had a lot of fun making these stockings, but it occurred to me one of the most important thing when you personalize things is to get the name right. So I did a little bit of research, made sure I had the family names spelled correctly and made this great set of stockings. I in even included little pieces like the buttons and they've been a lot of fun for me to ship off for a Christmas present. Um, when I embroidered these, I thought there's got to be an easier way. So I started another set of stockings and I picked out some fabric for one of my daughter-in-laws and got some help with auditioning some different cuffs. It's always a good thing to send it to friends of Inspired to Sew or friends and you'll get an answer back in 10 minutes about what's best. So I went ahead and I lined up all of the names that I would needed to stitch out into one large jumbo hoop because I really didn't like embroidering on those small pieces. So by lining them up and stacking them up, I was able to get all three cuffs in one hooping and it made it a lot easier and people asked me to put together some information. These didn't take me any time at all to get the three stockings done and they're gonna sure charm and grace the home of a family that's looking to fill them. Um, I, they also have a new family member coming, so I cut everything out and put together another stocking, and I'm going to ask them to put it into storage for when they have that new little baby coming. So we're going to start off with, I used a stabilizer to, to work with just fitted items. So the cuffs I'm using are fitted in. So I used an Ultra Clean and Tear Plus, and here I keep the directions together with this, and I use that strap to put it on there. So I've got my jumbo hoop, my largest hoop that I have, and I put the shiny side up down on my cutting table and I lay it out and I like to cut it with a rotary cutter. I like to work with my table so it's a nice flat surface. So I went ahead and I rotary cut that off and uh, slice it right off there. And then I've, I'm ready to go. Before I go any further though, I like to go ahead and strap that back up again with the blue strap for stabilizers. And it keeps it all together so I don't lose track of what it is because the stabilizers all have a tendency to look like each other. So um, that keeps that together. So what I'm doing here is, is I'm opening up my jumbo hoop. So I put the frame on the bottom and then I'm going in and I'm fitting this in there. I like to keep my hand on one side of it while I go ahead and tighten it down. And then I like to push that down a little bit further into the hooping because that shiny side has a tendency to make it stick up. So I'm using a tailor's awl. One of my favorite tailor's awl is a clover. And I etch the paper and I make an X in the middle of it. And then I pull off all of that stabilizer, all of that wrapping. Now it's real sticky on there. And I like to get as much of it out as possible because I'm gonna use a good bit of this hoop when I'm doing these different designs. And so I'm gonna lay out one of my first fabrics. Now these I'm not doing stockings, but I chose three different colors so you can see what I mean about using different fabrics. And on this one in particular, I'm lining it up there, in there, and I'm pressing it down. It's now ready to go ahead and hoop. However, I realized I missed a chance to mark the base because I want to make my markings, and I do the same markings on these as what I do on Christmas stockings. So I've got three kinds of markers here to show you, and I'm going to show you what my favorites are. Now this one, the shock aligner, is usually the one that I like, and so I'm measuring over about three inches from the right hand side. And this is exactly where I put things in stockings. Here's what I didn't like about the shock liner on that fabric. It rubbed off too easily. So now what I'm doing is I want it to move over further because I want it to be in that rice. So I'm using my sew line pencil in green to get that line. So that's how far over the right hand side of my uh, monogram is gonna be, my lettering is gonna be. Then I marked a line that's a three inch line from the top. I marked down a two and a half inch and I marked down a two inch line. Now the reason I have those three lines in there, and that green showed up really well on the pink. When I went to show the, the green on the green, I realized that's not gonna work. And so when I go to mark that on there, it's not gonna work the same way. So I'm gonna write that down, 
as far as how far over. Now what I'm doing is I'm using my duo marker. And I love the duo marker because when I get that in there, I can actually go in with the eraser and it'll make all of that ink disappear. It truly does disappear. And so the duo is one of my favorites to work with. Now in this one, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna mark it at three inches, two and a half inches, and two inches. That's because when I do monograms, or when I do lettering, sometimes on lettering, you're gonna see that things go down a little bit lower, like if they have a Y that hangs a little bit lower than the rest of the name, that bottom edge of that is going to be a slightly lower. So what I wanna do is I wanna have some clear lines that I can make those decisions when I line that up. Now I'm gonna show you on this what that looks like when that removes it. Now on this, on the video, you can see it leaves a little bit of moisture in there. When that dries, it actually disappears and the marker is gone. So I really love that duo marker. Now, on this one, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna position it in. Now when I positioned that in, I wanna show you, I actually had it positioned in wrong because I need it so that this is gonna be stitched completely over to the right. So when I start stitching in the top right, this is how I do Christmas stockings. So you saw me do the measurements on this where I measured it out and so I was about three inches, four inches away, depending on what the motif is that I'm trying to fit. But then I positioned it down based on doing a test stitch out. If you stitch it, your motifs in the top right and you put it in the stocking, your stocking, the point of the toe is gonna face to the left. If you do it in the top left, your stocking point of the toe is gonna to go to the right. So that's how I remember it. Most of my stockings have the toe pointing to the left. You make your decision, write these notes on your pattern. Now it's time to head on over to the sewing machine. So we're gonna go this step-by-step step how to position your lettering in the machine. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna start off with my machine going in and I have all the things for embroidery. If I wanted to go between embroidery and machine, I just go back to the home button. And so right now I'm taking the machine back to the regular standard sewing stitches. If I don't remember where I'm at, go back and click that home button again and it's gonna take me back to choosing between embroidery and stitching. So now I'm selecting embroidery. I'm going to open up my alphabet fonts and so when you look at my fonts, I have several pages of fonts. The more you pay for a machine, the more fonts you get. That's just the way it is. And so I have quite a few fonts on here that I can use within my machine. And so what I wanna do is, is I wanna know what font name that is. So I can use my manual or I can push on the question mark and it'll tell me which font that is I'm looking at. Push the question mark, then push the icon of what you're looking at and it'll tell you that positioning. So it works for a lot of the pieces on there. I'm gonna talk about the question mark and the value of that. It's on a lot of the machines that we carry and I think it's important that you use it. You can open your manual, of course. I chose the Alice font and I'm using that for my stockings. Again, I write this on my stocking. I have uppercase and lowercase lettering, so I'm gonna go ahead and enter my name in on this lettering font. Like I said, I remember, remember to put, write down which font you use because you might have to be making stockings again for this same family, and we're gonna be writing some of those settings down. Yes, you can save them in your sewing machine. Now in this one, I typed an O in there without a space, and I can use the delete key. The keyboard is an alphabetical keyboard, and so I can use that delete and I can move back. This is when I do my lettering and make sure I have the spelling right. One of the most important things when you make stockings for your home is, is when your guests come and they see their name spelled correctly, that really tells them that you honor them. So I clicked on the green, it comes into the screen. I notice right away it comes up at the font, it's gonna be on the, the hoop that fits it best. However, I'm gonna choose the largest hoop. So I'm choosing um, the largest hoop that I have in there. Now I'm trying to move this around, but if you notice, I'm still in the screen that uh, has to do with the hoop. So I check out some of the icons in there. Oh, lo and behold, there's virtual positioning. So I close out of that. Love that question mark. So I go to the question mark and I say, what is that one? If I go to that one, it's the center positioning. So this, that question mark really helps you to stay in your seat and keep going with it. So it now shows me the center. The next one above it is grid. And so it can show the grid for positioning. So if I want that grid to be showing while I'm positioning these, 
I can find it right there in the hoop settings. This is a good time to explore your machine and get to know what these different icons are about. And I think it's a great opportunity to get more comfortable with it. Question mark is important there. So I put closed out of that screen. Now I'm back in my window where I can add more lettering. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another name to the list. I'm going to bring it in in the same, in the same lettering font, in the, the Alice font. And then I go in and I'm putting in my small case letters in there so I can put in Chelsea's name. And there we go. Now Chelsea's name showed up right over Jessica's name because I said I wanted it center positioned. I can actually drag on the screen and I can drag it around or I can push I for information and now I can go ahead and I can change the position left to right, up and down and it's, it shows that the knobs are how I'm going to be moving that. But remember I could have moved it to just by putting my stylus on it and moving it around. So what I'm doing over here is, is I went in and I zoomed in on this because I wanted to see it a little bit closer. So I looked at that lettering a little bit closer. Notice that my C goes down below the line just a tiny bit. Pulled up Jessica's name again. I can toggle between Jessica and Chelsea, or I can put the two of them together by selecting that screen. So I see that I have both of them in here. Now in Jessica's name, I'm looking at, can I edit her name? Because she doesn't go by Jessica. She just goes by Jess. So I'm gonna play with some of my fonts or some of my tools in here and see what these tools are about. On that one, I can actually change my lettering where I can spread it out or I can arch it up or I can arch it down. Now watch what happens. If you notice those changes, get a yellow box around there. If I tap on those changes and I tap on that name and I go back to information again, I can come in here and I can, I can make those changes again. I can move that up and down. But let's say I don't want those changes. Tap on that and it turns off the yellow and it takes it back to what it was originally. But I still have the problem that this is not the name that she goes by. So I'm going to go into information again and I'm going to select the trash can. But I want to make sure it's the trash can. I push my question mark. Yep, that's the delete motif. So I'm going to click on delete Jessica's name and I'm going to delete it. It's asking me, are you sure? Yes, with green, it's gone. So now what I need to do is, is as I go in there, I need to add a name back in. So I can add it with that plus mark there. And so now I can add Jessica's name in. But this time I'm gonna enter in how she prefers to be called by our family. And she prefers to be called Jess. There we go, and we're okay with it. Now. When we look at this and we have that in the positioning, I can go in and I know that when I stitch these out, I want them to be larger than what the standard motif is because I've stitched them out. So that's my change motif sign. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of that one because now I know that's what it is. And what I'm going to do is, is that I'm going to go to change motif. Now the two of them, because that link is in the middle, it links the two of them together. So when I turn the knob, it enlarges and reduces width and length. So it proportionally enlarges it. If I tap on that, it turns it off and takes it back to the original. Let's say I turn off the linkage. Okay, I can't, I can't turn it off without clicking that middle piece. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just enlarging the width. So Jess's name now shows up with the width and it gives it a great little look to it and this might be something the way that I use it. So if you notice I'm now trying to select that other one and I went back and I took it to original format and they're locked and unlocked. So you do sometimes need to play with these. So now I'm going to give it a really nice height. So if I had tall skinny stockings I might mess with it this way. I might proportionally change it. But just make sure that if you want it proportionally changed that you link the two together. That's really important to do. So you can play with this all you want. You want to go back to the original format, just select them, relock it. I'm going to take this up to 120%. That's how I chose to stitch these out was at 120%. So I've got Jess's name at 120%. On the gifts that I'm making out of this, I actually am making these so that they're not matched. They're going to be given to people individually but I'm still going to enlarge them all to the same size. So I'm enlarging them all to 120%.
because I want to show you what I would do with stockings. Again, when we do things like this and we choose a specific alphabet and we choose the size of it, what I do is, is I actually trace the outer edge of that pattern or put a pattern in there and I put that on patternies and then I write down which alphabet I used, I write down the date that I made these, and then the alterations I made on the font. I also happen to um, put that in there where I show, um, uh, where, where I have the sizes of that in there and which sewing machine I stitched it out on. Not that I think that anything is going to change, but if a font disappears, I know I'll always be able to find it in software in the future if I need to. So I'm going to add my third name. This time when I added that name, I added it by clicking on the file motif instead of the plus. So there's more than one way that you can do things. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to enlarge this one into the 120%. So now I have three names in there. Now if you notice when I put those names in this order, I, they, they listed them from Chelsea to Jess to Monica. Now, if I would have, and I've got them all selected, I can move them all around at the same time. If I would have done them the way I did before, the, way, the order in which it would have stitched was the middle one, then the top one, then the bottom one. Um, it doesn't really matter. Once you get embroidering, we're going to show you how to get around to those. And now I'm ready to go and embroider. It's telling me to connect my embroidery module. So now I'm ready to go to the hoops and then I'm ready to position my designs in the hoop. So I've got all three positioned in there. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going through and I'm going to look them over and I've got all three names. I've got Jess's name first and if I go to Chelsea's, there it is at the top. And then what I can do is, is I can toggle between the three of these. Now if I go into that information screen, I now have the ability to check this because I'm going to position that on my first fabric that I have laid out there. So I go down to check and what it's doing is, is it's showing me the four corners. That's the upper left. If I tap on that one, now I'm in the lower right and that's where it's going to be positioning. Remember I marked these before, upper right, upper left, and I can actually move this around based on those pieces. Now notice that Chelsea's name goes a little bit below that line. So the three lines that I drew out there I'm actually going to want that C to be down towards the bottom line. Now I wanted to look for what the center of that is, so it would show me where the center is. I don't necessarily recommend you line it up with the center. I'm looking at lining it up with those corners. So I have it at this point, if it's in the center, it's going to be moving it up and down based on the center where, where I would want it. So that would take the whole name and center it on that space. You could actually do that where you mark the center of your hooping, but you don't have as much control. I prefer to mark it with my lower right. So I'm going to get that positioned in to where those marking lines were, the one that I put over there to the far side, and then the lowest line because that Y goes down below, to, below the baseline. So I'm choosing the lowest line that I have in there. So I'm going to scooch it over a little bit more and get it fitted in there. So I've got that all fitted in. I can actually drag it around on the screen, but I'm not going to be able to get it to move as easily. So I'm going to go ahead back in there and I'm going to check those spots. And I'm going to move out of that. And there we go. Now I'm ready to stitch that one out. So I'm going to go back and check it again. Check my corners. Make sure that I'm about in the space that I want it to be. Now on these guys, these are not um, cuffs for stocking. So I'm actually choosing to scooch it over a little bit more into that nice motif on there. So I can line it up with the motif where I want it to be. The three names that I'm using for this are not going to typically be together. These are separate gifts for these people. And so I'm going to play with it a little bit more and move it over. However, for the example of my stockings, usually I go and I'll move it in a little bit like three inches to the one side of it. Now if you notice that line right there shows the base. The C is a little bit lower than the Y. So I'm choosing to go in there and choose of my three lines, my lowest line to get that C lined up at the far left side because the C is a tiny bit lower than everything else. So that's where, that's where it's going to land and it's going to stitch about into that right. So I'm going to lower my needle to see that it's landing on that line 
And again, I'm showing you this so that if you're doing stockings that are matching, you could actually get your stockings all the right size. And if you notice, it's going a little bit into that gold motif, and I'm testing that line. Sure enough, there it is. Now, if you don't pull that needle all up and you go to check it, it's going, your machine, all the machines that we have are going to stop and say, you can't move the hoop right now because your machine is designed to keep you from breaking your needle. Isn't that nice of it to do that? So I'm going to get this all lined up with that motif and get it all positioned in there. So I'm going and checking it one more time. Yeah, I do check this quite a bit because I know that I don't have much of this fabric left, and so I don't want to mess this up. And definitely, I'm a little bit nervous about doing this because I did fall in love with this fabric a little bit more as I was stitching on it. So what I'm going to do right now, check that center one more time, see where I'm at. There we go. It's going to show me how many minutes. That info is going to give me a chance to go back and look. There's my, there I can go in and I can zoom in a little bit tighter on that and look at that a little bit closer. So there we are. It's showing me where that C is landing and how that C is a little bit away from my other letters. So if you want to get in and zoom in a little bit closer, I will tell you here, if I wanted that C, only the C to be bigger than the rest of it, I would have had to have brought that in as two separate letters. You can't actually change just one letter. You can do that if you use the softwares. And so you have the ability to change those letters. But as it is right now, I'm fine with it looking this way. And I just, I really want to get these stitched out. Again, this is the Alice alphabet that I'm using in here. And then I'm ready to go. So let's keep going. We're going to zip up that stitching. So now we're going to stitch out um, Chelsea's part of it. And we're going to go ahead and move ahead with it. So what I've done now is I sped up the stitching a little bit in my camera. Um, I do have the speed going up as high as I possibly can. However, I will tell you that um, your machine will only go as fast as it can efficiently stitch this out. And now what I have going on here is, is it's using the feature called thread away. So you'll see as it stitches between the letters, the machine moves away, and this is only on some of the machines, but it moves away and it gives you a chance to, um, it cuts the thread, and then you don't have thread tails on the top of your work. And that's a really cool feature. Now that first thread that you see over there, that's the tail thread that I started with, it can't thread away that piece. On the back of this, you'll then see some longer threads. That's both the top thread and the bobbin thread, and they're brought to the back. What I love this for is, is when you have a dot of a letter, uh, uh, the dot over the letter I, it actually fills it in. So we're going to move on to the next stitching. We've got Chelsea's name all stitched out, and we are going to add the next pieces. Now, this is one piece of fabric that I have in the hooping. And remember, I've got three names in there. Now I'm going to pull out my clips. And I love these clips for this because what they're going to do is give me a chance to get that fabric out of the way. So I'm going to clip it up there and I'm going to clip them together. That way then I'm not stitching into this with my next line. So I'm taking those clips, using plenty of them. Now I'm setting down my next strip of fabric so that I can position Jess's name on top of this one and I line that up. Now, if you want to make sure it's straight, you put your grid in there and you'd line up your lines. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up Jess's name. Now, if you notice when I pulled that down, the, the presser foot pulled my fabric off just a tiny bit. All I have to do is reach up there, flatten it out again, and clearly I need to put a few more clips in there to keep this from moving around when it runs into the fabrics. And so I'm going to clip it down to the tails of the stabilizer that are around the outside edge. Those clips are really handy, handy to use with for this, so I'm going to line those up and I'm going to put plenty of clips in there. Now, I'm going to go to Jess's name and I'm going to check this name. And if you notice, that's my lower corners and I'm going to check the corners the way I was doing in the other one. Now I'm going to move it up. Now on this one, I use my dual marker, dual marker and uh, so I can see my lines a little bit better um, they are darker against this. And again, Jess's name, the J goes down below the baseline. So I'm using the lowest line of this. I'm getting my line lined up there in the corners. And I'm checking all my corners to make sure that it fits in there. And I'm ready to go. And I'm ready to stitch. Now again, ran it into it. What does that tell me? I need a few more clips stuck in there. So, um, you know, I'm not worried about anything falling down around there. So I'm going to 
anchor it down a little bit more. The reason it did that was, was when I went up and I bounced between Chelsea's name and Jess's name. So that's why it went up higher than I would want it to go. On this one, I chose to use the same gray thread, even though I had gold stitching on there. And it was really fun. It turned out great. I'm real happy with it. And so I took my longer thread out of there. This one also, I'm using my thread away between my letters. And so I'm not going to have little short threads in between um, her name. If you notice on that one, um, she, her letters are kind of close. And so then you don't want those threads coming in between them because then I have to go back and try to clip that out. So thread away is a cool feature that's on a lot of our top of the line machines, but even like the 700 has thread away and that's a really good one to work with. I love this font. Um, there is, it just has some nice curly cues to it in it, but it still has a tendency to um, look like a basic font. Now, and these guys, like I said before, is, is that I wasn't quite so fussy about, like I didn't try to overmatch the threads on this. So I didn't use a green or didn't try to bring a gold thread in to, to work with this because I didn't want to run into it and I didn't want to fuss with it. So the gray that's in um, the Mettler thread is what I'm using in here. And it's a three ply 50 weight thread. And because I enlarged that lettering a little bit, my 50 weight three ply thread has a tendency to fill it in a little bit more. This is one of the times that I'd mess a little bit with my threads and I would change, um, you know, changing the size of it. It's the same number of stitches when I didn't enlarge it by 120%. So those stitches are a little bit further apart. So I chose a bulkier, a slightly bulkier thread. So when you see 50 weight thread, our, um, our isocord and poly sheen are a 50 weight thread, but they're a polyester thread. They're 100% polyester. This is a silk finished cotton, but it but the key to it is is it has three ply. So three ply is like three strands that make the thread um, what it is. And that's one of our biggest differences that we see between our Mettler thread and our Aurifil thread. And it's one of the reasons a lot of people like the Aurifil for piecing. And so so then you can do that. Yes, you could have stitched this out with Aurifil. So you know, depending on the colors. Now, as you notice, it went to my third name down there in the bottom. So what I'm going to do right now is, is I'm actually going to start positioning it in and I'm going to locate that. Now, if you notice in this one, what I did was I pulled up all three names. I only want to work with the one name. So what I'm doing here is, is I'm going down and I'm finding my positioning and I'm getting it moved over. Now, part of the reason I'm doing it on this one a little differently is, is that you could have actually squeezed another name in between Monica and Jess's name. What I chose to do was to go ahead and leave it r about where it was at, but you could probably get four names in here. You could actually put a name in going, uh, these are all horizontal in the hoop. I could have maybe put one in vertically in the same sticky stabilizer. So now I have my taupe colored fabric that has my rice motif on it. Now on Monica's name, the M is considerably lower than the other letters. The N is a little bit lower than the others. So I can go ahead and I can go ahead and position that in there. Oh, more clips again. Get your clips back in there. And as long as I'm not pushing that green button, this thing's not going to start stitching on you. Or the other thing is you're not going to be doing, you're not going to run into it. Now, sometimes we make mistakes when we're setting things up. So I want to show you the mistake that I made on this one. And so I had started stitching out Monica's name and it was considerably higher. I hadn't taken my time and positioned it in there. I don't give up on these things. What I'm going to do is, is I went ahead and I repositioned it where I really wanted it to be. And so I stayed right by the machine there. And then I take my handy dandy seam ripper over there and I ripped out some of these top stitches. Now, normally when I'm ripping out embroidery, I prefer to rip out from the bottom and then pull the threads out from the top. However, because I have all this going on with three different fabrics on the top of this, I didn't want the chance of messing this up. So I went ahead and pulled the stitches out from the top, knowing that I'll probably have some errant threads underneath the bottom. And so I'm going to go ahead, position it in. I had to go back through the names again and then move forward. And there I go. Voila. I've got this all stitched out. Now, this one turned out really fun. I've got all three names ready to go. And I hope you have a lot of fun stitching out names. And when I went ahead and finished these, these are going to go into 
some zippered bags. Um, I did trim these out when I took them apart and um, then I found that I had more sticky stabilizer and I was able to do a few more lettering pieces on my stabilizer that I had left. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for being inspired to sew. We look forward to inspiring you more. Bye.